praise and glory be to the Most High God and His Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ is coming. He is coming. Please accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. For He died on the cross for your sins. He shed His precious blood for you. And He loves you more than anything. And I'm going to be reading just a little sample. It's a little sample of writing. It's written by Kathy Bedrow Kerner. I don't know who Kathy Bedrow Kerner is. Um, but she's written this, and you can take this up to the Lord in prayer and ask Him for guidance, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and turn to the Lord with all your heart and soul. And the title of this is the same as the title of this video, What It Means to Have the Lord in Your Life. What it means to have the Lord in your life. Having the Lord in your life means that you have peace and comfort in your heart as you walk down any pathway your life has to offer. That's right, when you have Lord Jesus Christ with you, no matter what's happening in your life, you will have peace and safety in your life, no matter what. God will be there for you, and He'll never, he'll never leave you. And so, like, when things start falling apart, you'll have peace and safety. Like, here's an example. Uh, I misplaced uh, my handbag, and uh, I didn't know where it was. And... I knew it was in the in the in the in my where I'm living in the building I'm living in, so I knew that I tracked that down. But where it was was it on the table? No, it wasn't on the table. I looked everywhere there, and then I was like maybe it went upstairs and it was one in either in this closet style room. No, it's not in there. Is it in my bedroom? And I even took my box spring and mattress and took them apart to see if maybe it got underneath the bed. It wasn't there, and then. Ah, uh, the Lord had had told my mom to lift up this blanket, and and, and so she told me to lift up the blanket because she's sitting on the couch, and I lift and we li and I lifted up the blanket, and guess what? It was there underneath the blanket on the couch. And instead of panicking and getting upset, I had put on uh, Christian music, relaxing Christian music. Most of it was just instrumental piano that was made by handmade music. It wasn't like. You know, music by professionals, it was just an ordinary uh, bloke playing a piano, it was, a, it was a Christian song, but in piano, no, uh, no vocals, so anyway, and I just like, I was like, I'll relax, it's not going to matter, if worse comes to worse, I'm, you know, and I'm like, just relax, have peace, God will help you find it, God will help you find it, and it was found, and in, that may be a very minor thing, but no matter what's happening, like, like say you get lose your job, instead of getting all panicked and upset, just relax, take a deep breath, and say, God has got this. He'll lead me to another place, and He will. He will lead you another place. I've been down that road, and He got me from where I was working to a better place, and that was my first job. And I went from there to another place, and it all worked out. And God is a gracious and good God. He will get you through it. And He will be there for you. And let's continue. It means you can pray to a caring and compassionate Father who always has the time to listen and who never fails to understand the hurts and fears that are dwelling in the depths of your soul. God knows your hurts, your, hurts, your fears, and everything you're going through. Remember, Jesus came down on this earth. He was born a virgin and He lived a perfect 33 years but he knew everything we went through he knows what it's like to go to the bathroom he knows what it's like to you know have to take a bath and what's like to smell and and all the things of having a fleshly body and he knows how we're tempted as well he knows all of that very very well and he knows that we're frail beings that we that we easily sin and we easily trip up and we easily fall and falter Jesus knows that very, very well. And he knows our all our problems. And that's why when you come to him, you just lay it all out on the table. You just lay it all out on the table and just give it all to him to have a long discussion. Tell him everything. You know, there's no need to hide anything from, from him. And he's going to know anything, even if you try to hide it. So say you have an addiction to collecting uh, uh, Hershey wrappers. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of that. And you were stuffing them under your carpet. And you had this huge pile of Hershey bar wrappers underneath your carpet. 
and you're like, you know, you never, and you're like, I'm not going to tell Jesus about these Hershey bar wrappers that I've been gathering up. He doesn't need to know that. I'll bury it under the rug. He won't know. He won't know. He knows. He knows. He knows exactly when you bought those Hershey bars, when he knows when you ate them, he knows when you packed up the wrappers and stuffed them under the carpet. So there's no way you can hide them from him. Even if you hid it in the, under a carpet in a closet and then, and then buried it there. He, he's going to know everything. He's God. He's, he's omnipresent, omnipotent. He knows everything. So you can't hide anything from Jesus. You can't even hide the stuff you're hiding under your, underneath, your, underneath your mattress or anywhere else. You know how people like to bury things on their mattress. Uh, you can't hide anything from them. So just let it all on the line. If you're having an addiction to gathering up Hershey wrappers and hoarding them, discuss it with them and, and, and Jesus will get to the root and cause why you're hoarding them. Maybe it's because you, you have something to do with your childhood. Let's say you were never given any candy bars and you were always, you know, seeing other kids with these with Hershey bars, and you always wanted one. And then finally, once you were old enough to have them, to be able to afford them, you wanted them, and you gathered up the wrappers. I don't know why I ended up on that type of story, but he understands. He understands our faults, our failures, everything. Like so, Jesus understands all of it. There's no need to hide anything from from him. And there's just no point. You're going to know anyway. But he wants to hear from you. It means having the assurance that nothing can ever come your way that you and he united together cannot deal with and ultimately overcome. Even the through tears, hurts, and painful times have come and undoubtedly will continue to come. You can know that he has his hand in everything and things will always work out for good. That's right. So when, when things happen... Like, here's an example. You have this woman named, uh, what random name would come up with? Kassara. So you have this woman named Kassara, and she's engaged to this guy, and she's been engaged to this guy for six years, and she's waiting for him to get a good career so he yeah, makes money. And he keeps putting it off because he doesn't, he, he likes her and finds her pretty, but he's not in love with her. And he's been secretly, um, dating three, three other women on the side, and, uh, you know, doing the bedchamber thing with him, let's just say that much. Where he's not doing that with this with Kassara. Kassara's a true Christian girl. She loves the Lord Jesus Christ. She has all her faith in, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and she's remaining pure and holy to the Lord. And she does, she she does love, uh, what would be a good name for a boyfriend, Gregory. She does love Gregory, but she doesn't know his secrets. She doesn't know, and he is, keeps it well hidden. And she keeps praying to the Lord to bless Gregory with a job. Bless him with a good paying job instead of these, you know, minimally part-time jobs he's working at. Like, right now he's working at a deli counter at a local grocery store called um, the, the, uh, Enoch, Enoch Grocery Store. I don't know where I come up with these things. Maybe it's because I'm looking at the book of Enoch. <laughs> but anyway. So, he were, so Gregory's working at the at Enoch Grocery Store. And he's a deli, at the deli counter. And that's what he's been doing. For the last six years, he's been working at the, at the at this part time, working probably fifteen to twenty hours a week at the Enoch Deli count at the Enoch Grocery Store's deli counter, uh, and slicing people's deli meats, which their cheeses and their hams and their, and their and their stuff. And she's praying that he'll get a good paying job. And he, and he applies for these jobs, but he never gets them because he doesn't care. He he doesn't care, or it's because it's God's will that he doesn't get these better paying job and he stays working at that deli counter so and Kassara's like she wants him you know to get that career so she they can get married and, have, and start a family together and six years have passed and now she's 32 years old and she's wondering like why hasn't anything happened she's still living with her parents with her mom and her dad and her uncle's like I had the uncle has his business and he has an opening and he's like you know he could work you know at his business um his business was uh, auto mechanics. And so her, her uncle John's like, you know what, he can come work with me. And, he, you know, he interviews him, but he doesn't get the job. Gregory doesn't get the job. For whatever reason, her uncle's like, he can't hire this guy. He just can't hire him for whatever reason. And Gregory stays working at that deli counter. And he continues to work at the deli counter. Well, one day, her mom has decides to, you know, go, go visit some friend. Her friend comes into town. 
and she goes to visit the friend at the, at the local motel, because her friend had decided, who lived far away, her friend lived in Iceland, and um, decided to come back to town, and came back and was visiting this small town in Maine, and stops in the motel. Well, guess who's at the motel? Gregory and this girl named Brittany. So he has this 22-year-old girl named Brittany, and he's 36-year-old man, and he's with Brittany, and she sees them out in the hallway before they go into their motel room, um, doing things that are inappropriate that he should not be doing, and then she sees him go into the ho ho hotel, motel room, whatever. I, I, what's the difference between a hotel and a motel, anyway? I've never been in either of them, but anyway... So, the season been going to that motel room. And, um, so the mom's like, said, tells her friend, her friend Sarah, like, listen, I, I gotta call my daughter. So she, you know, pulls out her cell phone and calls up, because, sorry, you, you need to come over, to, come over to this motel place next to the hotel. <laughs> um, because I saw Gregory here. Because, sorry, I saw him here. He is cheating on you. Come here now, and then Kassara does like Kassara's, you know, at home. She had the day off from work, um, and Kassara makes, you know, works works a good job. She works as a secretary at a local law firm, and she, you know, it's, it's her day off. It's a it's a Saturday, and so she gets into gets in her car, gets into her old uh, her old uh, red sedan, and drives over, and and she ends like you know, and her mom's like, go to that door over there, knock on that door. And Kassara doesn't believe it. She doesn't believe that Gregory's cheating on her. She, you know, she believes he's an honest, good man. He, he, you know, he knows the Bible. He goes to church with her on Sunday. You know, he, he seems to be a good Christian man. He wears a cross around his neck. But in reality, he is not a good man. So she knocks on the door, and Gregory tells Brittany, you know, I think I ordered this Uber driver to bring over us our favorite tacos from Pepper Taco Bell. <laughs> anyway, so Brittany's like, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. And Brittany's in this, you know, in this tube top with these extremely short shorts. And she has, you know, bottle blonde hair with some rainbow color on one side. And she's got tons of makeup on her face. And she opens the door and she automatically knows who this is. Because she's seen, she works as a waitress in one of the restaurants that Gregory takes Kassara to. And she knows who she is. And she, we already had conversations. She's been dating and um, messing with Gregory for four years now. She's been cheating on Gregory with her for four years. And not, and not just with... Um, uh, since you not just with uh, Brittany, you see, you've been cheating on her, using cheating, and having it, you know, messing around with Brittany since she was 18, which is four years, and he's been doing it to uh, two other girls as well, and they all know about it. So, and they're like, you just let me. They even tell him to let that poor girl go because you know it's not worth it. And she she goes right up and tells Kasara the truth that. Yeah, and Kassara is like in shock, and tears are rolling down her eyes. And then finally, Gregory does come. He's like wondering what's taking Brittany so long. And he comes in, and he's just wearing a pair of pants and no shirt. <coughs> and yeah, and he's and he's like, I can explain, Kassara. I can explain, but he knows there's nothing he can do to say to explain to get him out of there. But the prayers that Kassara have been praying for for six years, basically, that he would get a good paying job. And he would get out of Enoch's grocery store deli counter <laughs> and stop working there and get a good paying job so they can get married. Had, had never came to truth because God knew what would happen in the future and God knew who, what type of person Gregory was. Gregory wasn't a Christian. He never came to Christ. It was all a farce. And he was just stringing her along and using her help pay his gas bill, his rent, and a bunch of other things, because she had a good paying job as a secretary at a law firm. And that's what he did. He just strung her along for the last six years, using her to pay his bills, pay for the, the dinners and stuff at these fancy restaurants and everything else, and even he'll have her pay for some of his clothes he, had. he just he wanted to buy. He used her as basically a cash key. 
and he was stringing her along, and he knew he couldn't have any, like, physical relationship with her, so he just milked her for her money, and then while he, while he had had women on the side, that she had no deal about, that he was sneaking in and, and doing, doing things with them in, at the local motel, next to the hotel. But anyway, and, there, and that's what happened. In reality, it, 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 it shook. And Kassar realized that he was stringing her along and using her. And she also realized that she needed to have more discernment. And it helped strengthen her and build her close to the Lord. And helped her realize that she needed to trust the Lord more in discernment. And to realize that why the Lord had never answered her prayers about blessing him with a good job. And the reality of why he was, why she was kept paying all his bills and his debts. Because he was using her. And it shocked her, but it opened her eyes to the truth and to reality. That what he was. And sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers for reasons. Sometimes it's because if he, God had answered her prayers and gave Gregory a good paying job. And she married him. She would have been married and unequally yoked with an unbeliever. And much less a cheater because he would have cheated on her while they were married. Because he did not love her. He never did. And that's why God didn't do that. There's a reason why. And if there are prayers that you know, like, like I can't tell you what I'm praying for. Because I'm, but like, if there's prayers that you're praying for um, that you want to happen... And you and you truly believe they're God's will. Just keep praying for it. Like um, if you're praying like for like a gift from the Spirit or 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 something else or or a healing for a loved one, just keep praying for it. God God will answer it in His own time, and there's reasons why. Take it all to the Lord and trust in Him. And I wasn't planning on doing a story. Let's continue. Um, Having the Lord in your life means that you can be assured with, with, no certain, with no uncertainty that you will be given the strength to endure anything that happens to you and you will become a better person. That's right, you will become a better person because you will have the strength to endure through the most troubling, hardest times. Like this woman that was, that was from this book about the history of Ireland and she was bedridden, she was back like, I can't remember what century it was, 15th, 16th century, uh, I don't think it was the 17th century, but anyway, it was, it was from an old book, it was a huge book, and it was about the whole entire history of Ireland, it included the potato famine as well, and, uh, she had became bedridden, it didn't specifically say in the book why she became bedridden, and, but she did. And when she became bedridden and was ill, she wasn't old, she was young. She was married to her husband, and she just felt guilty that, you know, that he had, he, you know, he had a beautiful young wife, but she was bedridden and ill, and she couldn't move or walk anymore. And, uh, and her life was, you know, slowly going downhill. That, but she, that God had given her the strength to endure through those times where she couldn't move, where she couldn't walk, where she had to lay in a bed and have people clean clean up after and roll her over and everything and, and take care of her and she can and when she did have enough strength to get up and move that she would try to read God's word and she tr she trusted in him and put her faith in him and it made her a better and stronger person and she got a very deep strong relationship with, with Lord Jesus Christ more so than her husband and the other people who lived in the house because she spent all her days alone in a bedroom talking to having long conversations with him and when she could she would when she could and had the strength to she would lift up herself up on our pillows and read God's word but there were a lot of times where she was so ill and, and so fatigued that she couldn't even get up and she would just have endless conversations with it and she called it being in the being in the shadow of death walking in that valley and it made her a better person it made her stronger and closer to the Lord, and that's what we all need to, to, to strive for, to become closer to the Lord, because the closer we get to Jesus, the better a person we become. 
and the Lord Jesus Christ's light shines on us. Hopefully that helps someone. Even though all these blessings are crucial to our day-to-day -day existence on this earth, they are small compared to the promise of spending an eternity in His presence. That's right. All the blessings that we get, and all the trials and sufferings we get as well, all of it is, are crucial for our day, you know, crucial, especially our blessings are crucial for our day-to-day -day existence on earth. And all the pain and suffering we go through, which helps bring us, make us stronger and brings us closer to the Lord. Because when our hearts get shattered and then get get healed and then get reformed into the image of God, that's why we go through trials and tribulations during our lives and our childhood all the way up. Because our heart gets broken and shattered and it gets healed by Jesus. Jesus heals the brokenhearted. He's nay to the brokenhearted. He loves the brokenhearted. And he heals the brokenhearted, and their hearts get healed and get molded like clay into the image of God. Which is so amazing. And what we've been through, the things that break us and shatter us, make us stronger to the Lord. It makes us stronger. And it is amazing. I It just amazes me, you know, how strong people can become when... They get close when they get close to Jesus, and they get their hearts healed, and and they get stronger from from all the trials and tribulation they've been through. It's just amazing, and even with me, I've been getting stronger myself, and I've seen it. Um, I don't have anger issues anymore, or I used to get angry and yell. I don't do that anymore. Those days are just, are like, I'm stronger now, and I don't need to do those things anymore, which is so amazing. And I'm strong enough to, like, be able to say no to the things I wouldn't have been able to say no to. Like, if someone said, oh, let's go to the mall, let's go shopping, whereas in the past, I probably would have said yes, thinking it was a great thing, and now I can say no. Or... Do you want to watch an episode of uh, Looney Tunes on the TV, like Bugs Bunny and all that? In the past, I would have said yes, giving into weakness, even even though it was I knew it wasn't anything good for me, it wasn't anything educational. But nowadays, I I say no, and I have nothing to do with it. Therefore, what it means to have the Lord in your life is knowing the blessed hope of tomorrow and the glorious promise of heaven that He has prepared for us. That's right. He, we have a blessed promise that we're going to be in heaven. So when you accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and walk with Him and repent of your sins on a daily basis every single day, multiple times a day, it's not just something you do like, oh, I'm going to repent today and then I'll wait four days and I'll repent again. No. It's a daily thing. Like me, if, as soon as I catch myself sinning, like, here's an example. We had, um, I was working, and we had some cans of food that were discounted, and they were for a donation drive, and I knew they were expiring, like, next month or whatever, and instead of, like, giving the people the, like, a short date on top of it, when it was already sale racked at, like, a dollar or less, I didn't give, I didn't do that, I didn't, and I didn't ask the management, first off, I didn't ask the management if I could, um, short date them, when they were right discounted already, because they were clearance prices, all you know, they were clearanced already. So I thought, since they're already clearanced, why did you need to discount them? But later on, uh, an employee, non-management, had asked, uh, I was leaving, and I, you know, say, did you clearance them? You know, did you give them, the, like, the sh uh, short dates on them? And I, I said yes, when in reality I did not, and it was a lie, and I automatically started repenting for it and feeling very guilty for saying that to her. And it was too late to fix anything, though. But, I mean, if I clearanced them at, you know, like, what, a dollar or less, and then you have 50, you know, 50% off, it would probably be nothing. And, uh, I didn't know if you could short date an item that's already, you know, right clearanced. It's already 50% off because it's clearanced, so. Anyway, long story short. But I repented for it, though, and I turned to the Lord, and I repented for it, and I repent for the. I I repent constantly. Sometimes I don't even know if I sin or not sin. Um, 
which is one of the things, like, even stubbing my toe, I don't, I may not curse, I may not say anything, but I can still consider that, like, a sin, because I hurt myself, and so I repent for that, or if I break a, uh, break a nail on it, and, you know, hurt, injure the, you know, fingernail itself, I repent for that, thinking, I, you know, I'm damaging my holy temple, you know what I mean, like, if you break a nail down to the quick, you, it hurts, and you start thinking, you, I could just magically consider that a sin, and that's just me. Um, but we have to live in constant repentance. Um, once saved, always saved is alive from the pit of hell. You just don't just accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and then go walking around and misusing grace and living in sin. It's not how you're supposed to live. It's it's an abomination to the Lord. Because, like, um, I don't want to give names, but um, there's somebody uh, that, uh, that I know that believes that, that somebody else they believe is saved, even though this person is an atheist. And does not believe in God and is living in sin. I'm um, living with a guy in sin, not married. And they believe they're saved because they had accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior back in the church when they were a kid. But when they grew up, they became an atheist and they rejected him. They were never saved to begin with. And, uh, yeah. Because then you could do, then it's misusing grace and, and anyone can go to heaven. And, and live in sin at the same time. It's that doesn't stay in the world. Holy God does not say that. Jesus does not say that. He says, take up your cross and deny yourself and repent of your sins and turn away from your sins and follow me. Um, so, yeah. So if you want to go to heaven, accept Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, love him with all your heart and soul, open your heart to him, have this, have have a discussion, have a relationship with him, read, read the Holy Word. I'd say 30 minutes or less or maybe even just one chapter I, I stress to read the Holy Word. Um, I know sometimes it's hard for people because, you know, especially with my generation and younger, uh, it is very hard for people to read nowadays because people spend so much time, you know, quick browsing their smartphones that it's hard for them to read. And I understand. I've saw it with my generation and I see it with the younger generation because I've worked with a lot of people who are younger than me. And they don't like to read. They don't. They, they just don't. They don't have the. They just don't have the attention span. And it takes, it takes time to learn to read. You know, to sit there and read the Bible because it's not like a, an ordinary chapter book. Um, and I, in my opinion, you sh it's okay to listen to an audio Bible, but you need to read the words yourself, so you can learn the meanings of it and to hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you, which is the Rama Word. You need to hear the Rama word, the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And the only way to get that is reading God's word. And the best way, if you, you have a hard time reading the Bible and have a hard time reading, is pray and ask God to help you. And just read even just a few sentences and then pray about it and, and ask God to help guide you. And he will help you. He'll help you overcome that, that problem with, with reading and distaste with reading. For, because today's society, so many people just spend all their time watching videos and flipping phones and doing text messages that it's you know reading is going downhill i remember one of my teachers in in, in, in a high school um telling my mom they were very shocked that they saw me carrying around a book and reading a a, a novel book um where because now nobody else was when i was in high school and i was in high school about uh 10 years ago so yeah, and at that time period, I was reading uh, one of my grandmother's uh, uh, silhouette romance novel books, uh, which I don't read them anymore. <laughs> no, I don't read romance novels anymore. Those romance novels, though, were um, what you would call old-fashioned romance. There was no graphic detail in them whatsoever, <laughs> so um, they were very old-fashioned, no graphic detail. They're not like modern books that I would never read anyway. Um, I, I read like one of them and I didn't even read the whole book and I threw it because I thought it was disgusting. Um, and uh, I got rid of it. I don't read graphic books. I didn't read them back then. So uh, I didn't like having to uh, read uh, Stephen King's book when I was in high school because I had to for my English class. We had to read this, uh, Stephen King's book, Carrie, I think it was. And I couldn't stand that book. And we had, a, and we were thinking about, we were thinking about having us watch the movie. But I'm so glad that the teacher decided to cancel having us watch the movie. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the Stephen King books and and all that is just they're horrible. 
they have nothing to do with Christ and their abomination. In my opinion, uh, the Carrie book made fun of Christians and Christ. Because the, the, Carrie's mom was a Christian woman. They, they were making mockery of her and it was disgusting. Anyway, oh my goodness, I ran out of time. Therefore, what it means to have the Lord in your life is knowing the blessed hope of tomorrow and the glorious promise of heaven that he has prepared for us by Kathy Bedford Kerner. Thank you for listening. I speed it up because I'm out of time. It's 30 minutes. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ is coming.